Hi, so I have my control panel installed. It's all wired up. And I have DC control and DCC control. So I have DC working. There's a locomotive going on DC. And then I can start this guy up on DCC. And right now I have two of them running at the same time with individual control. I have on the far track that's DC. And then this one over here is DCC, both running on the same layout at the same time. And uh, that's because of how I wired up this control panel, which I showed you in my last video. But in the last video, I stopped at getting the panel ready for installation. And now I have it installed and wired up and wired to the track. So I'll show you how I did that. So on this control panel, uh, what I did was I wired all the wires coming from the switches already to terminal blocks, which are now mounted underneath here. And I showed you how I did the wiring on the last video of getting to the terminal blocks. And then from there, uh, once I had this installed and in place, I ran wires from each of my sections or blocks of track to the terminal blocks. So what that means is I have no electrical connections hidden under the bench work. They are all either here or where the wires are soldered onto the tracks. Uh, for me, I like that for reliability. I don't, I don't have to be worrying about uh, wiring connections hidden somewhere underneath the bench work because there aren't any. So hidden underneath this control panel is this terminal block up here. And all of these wires that are running down all run to a specific section of track or block of track that's um, most of these sections are just isolated from each other and I'll show you how they are done. Um, there is one terminal block hidden behind here that is the, um, I guess the splitter block for the different sections of the main line because the main line took more than one feeder wire going to it. So what I did was I ran the power that comes from the switch for the main line, which is right here ran it down to that block and then from there I ran individual wires to different parts of the main line. So most of the sections of track are all being operated by just one set of feeder wires because for example this is just a short siding, this is just the switching lead, it's not a big deal. Um, for the main track, because it's a longer section, it's going through various switches or turnouts in model railroad speak. Um, I ran multiple feeders to that, so that's going from that extra terminal block at the bottom. Uh, the one exception to that is my rail yard, which is currently being operated by just or controlled by one set of feeders. Uh, because I am using Pico Inselfrog uh, turnouts. These are power outing turnouts. So for now, I'm just relying on these to isolate the power to my tracks. When they're, that track is not selected, no power is going to them. So that's what I'm doing with them. Um, anyway, so the powers all run to it. There are certain things like the turntable and the tracks off of that, the yard that's, the, the track that's going to lead into what's going to be my steel mill area. The switches here, um, it's wired to the terminal block, but there's no wires going to that area because there's no track there yet. So I haven't finished that part. Uh, this one white wire right here is a temporary wire that's powering my entire upper deck. And it's actually currently running off the same switch that powers the track to the helix. Um, there is going to be another smaller control panel going up here, but I'm not there yet. I want the track to work. So this is just a temporary power feed for the upper deck that I can turn off or on or select my power source from this switch the same time as the helix. As I mentioned, I had to run multiple feeders to my main line, even though it's not a large area in some places I needed to run um, a power feed to it here and then another one here, even though it's the same main line, it because of the fact that I am using these Insel Frog Pico switches. The power is automatically routed to whichever set of rails you have selected, and then the other pair is not. 
there's a small set of electrical contacts if you look in the bottom here that makes contact with the side the the outside rail and turns off turns on or off the the power depending on which way your your points are going so in a rail yard this is very handy for wiring because it means you can just feed power here and have it split out through a number of these switches and the only set of tracks the only track in your yard that's going to get power is the one that's selected for the trains to go on to so initially it can be very really good for ease of wiring however it does have cause issues if you're not thinking about it when you're doing your main line if if my power my power feeders to my main line are on this side of the switch then it's not as big of a problem because it just feeds the power which where whichever way I'm going however if I have this track selected and I want to move a train that's on this track on this branch of the main line the train is not going to move because the power is going the other way the other problem is is if on your track you have power being fed over here somewhere this side of the track is not going to get any power so you got to make sure that you have power being fed to your track everywhere that you need it to be because if you just feed power to your track put a bunch of these switches you can suddenly end up with a siding that's dead and you're going what's wrong with my wiring well the problem is that the power just isn't being routed to it because of the way these switches are, are configured and I'll show you that as to what, what I'm talking about here. For example, this is my main line feeding across here. And then it goes through this switch and through this switch over here. The problem is I also have a set of, so I ended up putting a set of power feeders here and a power feeding in over here. Because the problem is that this section and this cross over here are also all part of my main line or the same power block. So I actually ended up putting a set of power feeders here, here, and here. If I didn't do that, what would happen is if I only had the power feeders here, it would only feed power up to here and never up there. If I put power in here, it would feed power up here if the switch is this way. It would feed power up here if it's the switch is this way. But the problem is that this section going off the main line over here would never have power because it's being fed from over here or over there. And this switch would never feed it across. It would only feed power through this way if it's selected to this track. When it's selected to this one, the power would come and stop there. So what I ended up doing was having to think through the scenario of, okay, where's the trains going to possibly be coming from or going to and making sure that no matter what switch positions I'm using, the appropriate rails are going to have power. So I ended up actually putting in power there, there, and there. All of these wires go back to that terminal block under the control panel, but they're all from the same source. They're all for, for the main, main track power. Now, in terms of feeding the power up to the tracks what i did uh, was i would run from this terminal block i would run a power set of wires over to the tracks so for example right here i have some power feeders coming up i drilled some holes in the bench work ran the wires up tinned the ends of the wires so what that means is i put a little bit of soldering flux on them got them hot with the soldering iron Got a little bit of solder onto the wires i did the same thing with the rails themselves figured out where they need to be usually i try to do it at rail joiners because then i'm kind of doing do, doing two things at once i'm soldering the joint in the track and then putting the feeder wires on there so i don't actually have to solder in the middle of the track some places that's the only way it works so i end up doing that but usually i try to do it at a joint works better for me it makes the whole soldering process a lot easier if you get the section of the track where you can attach the wires tinned already get the wires tinted already then the both of them already have solder on them then you just need to clamp them together with a pair of pliers clips hold them in place whatever you need to do and with the soldering iron get get the solder back to the melting point and because both all halves already have solder the joint is very quick and easy to do the other thing i found is that 
I like to have my soldering iron set fairly hot because time is is a problem because you don't want your rail to heat up too much in each direction to start melting the ties and so if I found that for me at least if I keep my soldering iron fairly hot it means it gets the end of the wire and the soldering location up to uh, an appropriate temperature to melt the solder very quickly and it takes it doesn't end up heating up the rail in both directions as much if your soldering iron isn't set as hot because the rail dissipates so much heat it takes a long time to get it up to the point where the solder will melt and you're more likely to have the rails heating up too much in each direction and your ties are going to melt and it makes a big mess so i found that keeping my soldering iron at a fairly high temperature um, is really helpful especially when i'm trying to get the wires attached to the rails. Once I did that, then I also needed to isolate the sections of track. And uh, so for that, I just used my Dremel with a thin cutting disc in it. I just cut a small cut in each rail where I want the brake to be. Then I insert some little pieces of styrene in there uh, just to hold the rails apart so they can't shift together and uh, so they can't slide together and then accidentally make contact with heat expansion or whatever put a little bit of super glue on them dribble it down um, that super glue does a couple of things it glues the styrene into the rail but it also dribbles down onto the ties and everything and kind of prevents the rail from sliding in the ties at that location uh, once the glue is dried I just cut the excess styrene off with a little better cutters. Then I uh, use my Dremel with the cutting disc to kind of grind it down closer to the rails and then finally just sand the top of it smooth and then run a rail car over it to make sure it's good to go and doesn't make a derail and there's no extra burr sticking out. Uh, once you do that and later once I weather the rails or paint the rails and the ties, that joint pretty much disappears. Now, I mentioned in my earlier video that I'm not a big fan of the plastic rail joiners. And now, I did use them in a couple of places. Um, I think there's a section over there where I used them where I probably didn't need to, and it just reminded me how much I didn't like them. Uh, but there was another spot over here where I did use them between a couple of switches where the tracks come in, and I didn't really have enough rail to even cut it and I would be have to be cutting a switch and I don't like to do that because they're expensive and um, if for whatever reason I ever take this apart I like to be able to reuse my track and my switches and everything else so cutting into those cutting into rails on a section of flex track is not a big deal but cutting into my switches I try not to do that if I don't have to so I did use a couple of those plastic rail joiners but I don't really like them because I find them the little, I think they're the Atlas ones, I find them kind of too fat and too soft and too floppy. And if they're on a corner at all, they don't hold the rails lined up very much because they just flex too much. Uh, in the Pico switches, they don't slide into the switches very well because they're too thick. There's not enough clearance. So I'm not a big fan of them, but there are a couple places that I use them. Anyway, uh, I'm going to get going on trying to figure out how to build my turntable. So, uh, I think I'll leave it at that and uh, hopefully this gives you a bit more of an idea of what I did for the wiring. And uh, yeah, on the control panel, as you saw, I can run my DCC and my DC locomotive over here. I just flip this section track down for DCC, that section track up for DC, and I have full control of, of that. And if I want to, I can remove this locomotive from here, go park it somewhere flip this switch up and this track will be running on DC and I can run any of my DC locomotives on it. So it's a pretty simple simple system to use. Bit of a mess to wire, but simple to use and it gives me the flexibility of doing whatever I want with any of my, loco my locomotives anywhere on the layout. Thanks for watching and see you next time.